Hi, welcome back. Today we're working with virtual machines a little bit more, but in this case we're working with Kali Linux, Kali Linux. Uh, so it is a virtual machine that we've downloaded from Kali. So we're going to have to do a special way of adding that machine. So I'm going to walk through that process right now. So you can see I've got VirtualBox started over here. I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal. And hopefully that's large enough where I can see it. I'll make it just a little bit bigger uh, so it will be a little easier to see. Now what we have is we have a, if I go over to opt here and I look for Kelly Linux, you'll see that I've got this seven zip file and that's it. So I need to unzip this file. So the way we do that is we do a seven Z. We want to extract and we're going to do Kelly Linux just like that. I'm going to put a time in front of it, see how long it takes. It should take somewhere around 30 seconds. So we're going to have to wait for that to, to finish. While we're waiting on that to finish, I figure I would bring up our, uh, our lab here. So we're going to be doing a Kelly import, which is actually an add, not so much an import, but we will be changing the name to Kelly. We'll be doing an install of Parrot OS, that's Parrot Security. We'll be installing the latest version of that. And we'll be doing bug track. We'll be installing that as well. Now both the Parrot and bug track installation will be installed from live ISOs. So we're going to see how that works for us and you know what kind of time we have with that. It should be a pretty good time, nothing too eventful. Uh, we also have Black Arch, and we're going to install that from an ISO and get all of those up and running. Now, all of these you don't have to do right now. Um, I'm just going to do the Kelly, and then we'll look at maybe one more installation from an ISO. After we do that, we'll place each machine into the hacking group. We'll power those things on, and we'll choose install. Now, I'm going to let you... Uh, choose the install on your own, but I will walk through one of the installations with you right there in the screen. Okay, so we're done over here. It took a minute to do that. Now I'm gonna move this Kali folder that it created, and I'm gonna move that over to my VirtualBox directory. So VirtualBox, I'm gonna call it Kali, like that. So you see, click just like that. What I did is I moved this entire directory over to that and if I go over here and I do an LL you can see that we've got the same contents inside of there. Now I'll go over here and I'll choose add and over here we got the my name with VirtualBox and we get Kelly and I'll choose open right there open and ta-da there it is it's got all of its settings already set that's one of the advantages of downloading this uh, pre-made machine. And also in the description, you can see the username, password, or Kali. Not that root tour from the past, but Kali now. And we can uh, just power that on if we wanted to. We could just start this thing up, and it should start right up without any problem for us. So just like that. And it seems to start without a problem. All right. While that's starting, well, actually, it's going pretty fast. So I guess we'll just wait. All right. Kelly. Kelly. There we go. Now, this is one of the first distributions we're going to look at for hacking. Uh, this is not the only security-centric or hacking distribution out there. There are a number of those. Uh, in fact, I bet they have... Recon NG in here. Let's see if it's even. Where would they put that? Really not a network scanner. Not a live host notification so much. Maybe it's just down here. Oh, there it is. Recon NG. Sure enough, look at that. One we installed in Linux Mint. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so we've got a bunch of different things in here, and you can look at all those. Uh, it's a it's a great a great penetration or, or red team type distribution. So over here I'm gonna choose shut down. And we'll shut down that machine. We can see this works great. I'm gonna go over here on settings and I'm gonna change the name and we're just gonna call this uh Kali like that. Type Linux, Debian sixty four, looks good. 
over here, bi-directional, that's set super. We have two processors. Yep. And two gig of RAM. Perfect. Display has full RAM over there. The storage is good. Audio, Ethernet. In fact, everything is set properly. So we've got that machine going. Now for the next machine, we're going to click new. So we're going to install a new machine here. We'll call it Parrot. The type there, we'll go ahead and choose Linux. And we'll say, I believe we downloaded the Ubuntu based 64 bit. So we'll choose that. So next, how much RAM? We want to choose 2048. That's 2 gig of RAM. We're going to create a virtual disk now. So we'll choose create. VDI is correct. Dynamically allocated. Absolutely choose that. Dynamically allocated will only use the space required. So if you make a 128 gig disk and you only use two of it, then it only takes up two gig on your hard drive. It does not take up all 128 gig. Now, why would you not always choose dynamically allocated? Well, if you're using these on a workstation, you probably would. Uh, you would probably always choose dynamically allocated on a, a workstation environment and a lab environment, absolutely. Where you wouldn't is if you are doing some type of really high throughput for disk IOs, then you would want a fixed size and you'd want that thing to be all fixed. Or if you're very concerned about running out of space on the, the, uh, the disk where we have it held, just go ahead and use that fixed size so you know how much space you always have on that disk. But we're going to choose dynamically allocated. Next. Over there, that 10 gig, we're going to make that 48 gig and create. Remember, it's only going to use the space that it needs. So it's not going to go off, off and, and use a lot of extra space. A couple of the settings we can look at here. If we go to settings, we can go to advanced, and then we can make bi-directional clipboard and drag and drop a thing. And then go to description. And I believe the username in Parrot OS is user. And the password is Tor. So right there, user and Tor. Popping down the system, we can see we have choices here. We want to make it two CPUs. So we'll go over and select two right there. On the motherboard options, we really don't need a floppy drive on there, so we can disconnect that. On the display, video memory, we want to select all the way over for video memory and make sure we've got as much as possible dedicated to this machine. And that just gives you a little better experience on the desktop. So the storage, this is where we're going to insert our ISO. So we'll come back to that in just a second. On the audio, enabling audio is just fine. It's going to feed back through your speakers. And if anything does happen inside the virtual machine, you will be able to hear it. Now, in this case, we are selecting NAT. Now, when we get started and when we start attacking our victim machines with our um, our penetration or red team machines or attacker machines we are going to be using NAT network but we'll also be using host only so we're going to have both NAT network and host only selected Right now, we're not going to do that. We, uh, we are going to go ahead and select NAT Network because there's no reason not to. So we'll select NAT Network on there. And uh, NAT Network comes up. If it doesn't come up, you can go through and you can select the NAT Network. Now on promiscuous mode, we're going to say yes, allow all. So certainly allow that to be promiscuous mode or whatever it might be. Serial ports. Oh, what is promiscuous mode? Promiscuous mode means it will receive traffic even not destined for that interface. It'll receive traffic destined for any system, even not that system. So uh, VirtualBox will not deny traffic to this machine based on the MAC address. The serial ports over here, we're not going to be using serial ports, so enable that. Now USB, we are not going to be worrying about USBs right now, so we're not going to worry about selecting a USB there. But if you wanted some good speed, you could select USB 3.0. We do have the extensions for that. 
Shared folders, we're not using those right now on this machine, so we don't have to worry about selecting shared folders. And the user interface, we're gonna leave that the way it is. So let's go back to storage, and on storage, we're gonna select uh, right over here for the CD-ROM, I guess over here, I do have a solid state drive. If you are using a solid state drive, which if you're in my lab, you are. So please go ahead and choose solid state drive there. So go ahead and select that. But over here on the empty, uh, this is the CD-ROM. We're going to select from the CD-ROM using this icon right there. So when you select that uh, navigation, we're gonna go over to opt and select Parrot Security right there. Choose Open. So once we get that open, we've got the Parrot Security 501 AMD 64. And <clears throat> our drive created and everything else, we'll choose OK. And now we're going to power on our Parrot installation. So over here, we've got our choices, try slash install. So we'll go ahead and choose that. Give it a second to get started. Okay, it started right up. Now, on this, this machine, we're gonna work a little bit differently than we did on the Kali machine. The Kali machine was already installed, so it was fully built out, installed, and in a drive. This one is not. So on this one, we're gonna choose Install Parrot, so we're going to take it from its ISO and we're going to install this over, let me expand the screen out a bit. We're going to install this into the VDI drive that we created. So American English is good for me, so I'm going to choose next. Um, America, New York, sure. I'll choose that next. And we've got the default keyboard next. And over there, we've got the erase disk manual partitioning right there. We can say erase the disk with no swap, swap, no hibernate, swap to file, etc. I really don't think we're going to need a swap, so I'm going to leave that off. And we're going to choose next. And the bootloader location is the master boot record MBR of dev SDA. So that is correct. Choose next. And then over here, what is your full name? In, in this case, we're going to choose student. We're going to use student to log in. Name of this computer, we're just going to call this parrot. And password is going to be password, just like that. And I'm going to say log in automatically without asking for the password. So name of this computer is parrot. And then our username will be student. And this is just mainly for the labs in the future. So when you do something in a lab, you'll see the host name Parrot on there when you're using Parrot, Kali when you're using Kali, BugTrack or Black Arch, whatever you're using at that time. So let's go ahead and choose install. It says, this is gonna like ruin your disk, are you sure? Yes, I'm absolutely sure we're using this in a virtual machine and we're going to install this inside the virtual machine. So it is uh, not a problem. Now we'll come back in just a moment when this is done. It should take about 30 seconds to a minute, so we'll see how long it takes. While we're waiting for Parrot OS right here to finish its installation, let's go ahead and create the machine for Black Arch. So we're gonna go over here and hit in these machines over there, we're just gonna click new, and we're gonna call this Black Arch. And it's gonna be 64 bit, it's based on Arch Linux, so that's correct. So next, we'll give this two gig of RAM, next. And we may wanna in increase this to four gig later on, but we're gonna just choose the two gig right now. Well, maybe I have enough RAM to spare I'll go ahead and choose four gig. So you can see we chose 4096 there for four gig. And that gives you an option there is to see what it looks like. 
Now we're going to create a virtual hard disk. Remember the VDI and dynamically allocated. Those are default options. And over here, we're going to make it 48 gig. So we're going to create. Now this machine comes up. Let's go to the settings. And once again, we're going to choose the shared clipboard. We need to put in our username and password there. Um, over here, we're going to disable the floppy. Increase to suit two CPUs. On the display, take our video memory all the way up. The storage, we'll come back to that. NAT, we're going to choose NAT network on here and allow all for the promiscuous. And then back over here to storage, let's go ahead and select this, choose a disk file, and we're going to choose the parrot security right there. I'm sorry. We're going to choose the black arch. Let's go down black arch. There we go. And click. There we go. Now we've got it. So let's go ahead and choose start on this machine. If you can, if you've got the, the cycles and the RAM, go ahead and start those machines up. Now black arch comes up right there. It's got the full ISO, boot existing, hardware information, etc. So we're going to say, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do that full ISO. All right, came up to the live OS here, and now it's ready for the username and password. Now, for Black Arch, I, I think the username is either user or root. Uh, we'll try user. And uh, the password's Black Arch. Okay, root. Okay, it's root and black arch so root and black arch so there we go and you can see this has what looks like a black box or one of the derivatives as a desktop here so you get to menus through right clicking and going to different options here and you can see the different options we have now if this was uh, flexbox was a really popular um, window manager back in ooh, I'd say the late 90s early 2000s and I enjoyed Fluxbox a lot uh, black box just another another option there so you can look at it like that now we're gonna expand this out see how it wor works and on this one we can look at all kinds of options and there are a lot of them so we have a lot of options and you can get to them right here through right click oh they're using flexbox oh that's great um we can get to them right through here by right clicking on the screen so it's a really neat really neat option there i like that option where where you can go through and do that but let's get on to the lab here and we're going to go to a terminal and we'll just pick click a green terminal whatever terminal we want to choose and once this terminal comes up we can close this over here and exit on this we're actually going to choose a, a black arch install i think it's black arch install yes black arch install we're going to choose uh, from two because we're actually using the full iso right now the uh, available output is quiet and verbose i'm going to say yep quiet is great this right here for set a locale. If uh, if you want to set the locale, you can. Hopefully, it's going to find this for us. If it doesn't, then uh, well, let's go ahead and list available locales. So English, U.S. Da, 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 da. Let's see which one's not highlighted here. Let's do a search for U.S. Next. There. It isn't highlighted. So this one right here, this UTF-8, is already selected. So that's already an option. It says locale. Yes, indeed. And key map. Make a choice. U.S. See if that doesn't. All right, fine. U.S. Done. 
Now the host host name here, we're gonna make this black arch, just like we make the others, whatever the distribution name is. And we're gonna yeah, over there for SDA, we are gonna choose SDA and install black arch Linux with Windows other OS. And I'm gonna say uh, no. It's gonna be by itself inside of a virtual machine. Create partition CF disk root and boot optional swap. We can go ahead and do that. We can say no. I would highly recommend yes, unless you know what you're doing. And so we're gonna go through and go ahead and select Y for that. Let's start with an in memory zero partition table. Yeah, sure, it doesn't matter. Um, over here, I'm going to choose DOS and not the GUID partition table, but the old MS DOS MBR. So we're going to choose that. So the free space, we can go through and create a, uh, a couple partitions here and set up the machine just like you would in the past. And that way it will be, you know, set up like we would set up Linux a number of years ago. So at the very least, we'll need to boot the computer and have a root partition. We used to have a boot floppy and a root floppy. So here we'll go ahead and choose new, new partition size. We're going to say, I don't know, 500 meg, 512 meg. There you go. Primary. And then over here for free space, new. That looks good. Primary. And we're good to go. Oh. Before we do that, you make this bootable. Bootable. <laughs> you notice that little boot flag there was not set. So that would be a bad thing. Um, so we do need to do that. So over there, we're going to go ahead and uh, choose write and quit. There we go. Write. Are you sure you want to write? Yes, we do. All right. And we should be able to quit now and pop on out. No, we're not interested in encrypting root. Okay, it's asking, it looks like, what is the boot partition? We can say dev, and it is SDA1, that is the boot partition. EXT4 looks good. Dev SDA2 is the root partition. And default is good with that. And I'm going to leave that empty right there for no swap partition. Say yes. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, no crying afterwards. But that's okay. If it doesn't work, <laughs> just do it again. You're in a virtual machine. You'll be totally fine. All right. So there you go. Um, over here, <laughs> grab a coffee and pop some shells. Yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. All right. So it's going to go through and do its thing and get in, and get all installed. We're going to pop back over here to Parrot, see how that's done. Okay, good. It's done. So we're going to choose Reboot on this machine. Oh, we're still coming in from the optical drive, so we need to uh, remove the disk there. So let's reset. Yes, reset. Make sure that... There we go. So now it's going to boot to our installed version of Parrot. Well, I mean, hopefully it will <laughs> install. What does this black arch say over here? Installing the back doors to, <laughs> to root. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, the sense of humor. Uh, hackers. Hackers are fantastic. They're just. All right, where are we at? Okay. So there we got student and password. We're going to log in there. And now we've got our hopefully fully functional uh, version of Parrot OS running right here. Games. Oh, look at that. So we got pen testing bunch of tools that are often used there uh, information gathering tools well let's see if they've got recon now oh, there it is recon ng it's in the right place uh, vulnerability analysis some stuff there web application analysis exploitation tools etc 
Now, of the tools we'll be using, Parrot is probably the most user friendly. So it is uh, very well designed. I, I like Parrot a lot. Um, next would be Kali and then Black Arch, but we haven't actually pulled up Bug Track yet. So if we look at Bug Track, you may disagree. So go ahead and install Bug Track, same way we've done these. Um, if you need to look up anything, just go Google it. Say, hey, how do I install Bug Track, right? And follow the same, let's go over here to applications. Follow the same process that we did with our same settings um, that you saw us use when we built these machines. So over there, you can see that now I logged in as root. So it's root at parrot. And uh, this, this terminal right here, it's a fantastic design. I use a lot of the Parrot terminal design in my terminal, which we'll be installing a little bit later on, be downloading my bash, my bash settings a little bit later on. I hope that you found this useful. It's a long lesson. It's got a lot going on. But in any case, I hope that it was useful, and I look forward to talking to you again in the future.